Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome, welcome, God's people, on this second Sunday of Easter. So delighted to be with you together in community, worshiping God and giving thanks for the gift of the resurrection. I'm Pastor Karina Schiltz, your pastor, constantly with you, pointing to the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in song. Please rise as you are able. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mercy and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne. Through the earth, through the city, through every living thing, you rescued Noah and his family from the flood, you opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters, you flood us with mercy. And sin is defeated forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
seated. Children of God, you ha we have a calling and a purpose. God invites us into celebrating God's grace in Jesus Christ, accepting all unconditionally, and growing in God's call to serve the world. This is who we are, and at the same time, this is who we strive to become. We are the church, a people that are called, gathered, and sent in the name of our risen Christ, Jesus, risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like for the kids to be invited up for the children's time. If you want to come up, and we're going to stand when you come up. So we have a special job to do today, so we're not even going to sit down yet. And once you're all up here, I will ask you our opening question. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Blessed by God? I'm happy to hear that. So I was wondering, uh, what is the best surprise that you've ever had? Have you had like a great surprise? What's, what's been a good surprise you've had? Um, on my birthday, I got trees. Trees? Trees. You got trees on your birthday? Uh -huh. That's amazing. So on my birthday, I walked outside and um, I thought I was getting back and I was like, I already have a bike. And then I got trees. Trees for your birthday. That's a special birthday present. Anyone else have a surprise that was just so amazing? Like, surprise! Yes? Um, when I got my pet tarantula, um, I came back and um, it was in a cage and I, it was in an, aqu an aquarium and I thought that was really cool. Pet tarantula in a cage in an aquarium, really cool. Trees, tarantulas. Any other surprises that were really cool and fun? What was your surprise? Um, when we had turtles. When you had a turtle. A, turtle. a turtle. That is such a great surprise, too. Turtles, trees, and tarantulas. Anyone else have a surprise that starts with the letter T? <laughs> That's our, let's be our letter today. Okay, I, yes, one more surprise. It was the day you were going to Riverbend, and you got a, a what plushie? Uh, uh, I've never heard of this before. Do you all know what that is? Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. It's a Help us. Oh, okay. And, like they make like certain like products to, like okay. sell yes, their yes. Like, brand. Yep. And so they made this little like cat stuffed animal, oh. and it was bought for her. A little kitty plushie. And I'm getting another one. Okay, and that, that's not a surprise though. It sounds like you already know that. Well. These are fun surprises, but I have a surprise for all of you today. Did you know that it's still Easter for 50 days? Easter isn't just one day. And so I hid some things around the sanctuary that aren't Easter eggs, but they're, you might notice what I've hidden. Has anybody noticed anything that's like, what do you see? Hearts all over the place. Okay, would you all go and try to find two hearts each, but f help those who cannot find them too. Okay, find the hearts. See what you can do. Find, find some hearts. Find the surprises. Hmm. Once, you do, once you find some, you just come on back to the middle. Okay, and then hold up your hearts when you're done. Let's see. Oh, oh, <gasps> did everybody find hearts? Does anyone else from out here see any hearts that we missed? Sometimes we need help. Oh, we've got one way in the back. You know what? You're, we're going to have you keep that one for emergency purposes. <laughs> T. 
Today, we have surprises. And not just today, every day we have surprises from God. And the story we're going to hear today, Jesus, the best surprise ever, shows up with the disciples who are in a locked room. That would be like if we shut all the doors to this room and we didn't let anybody out and we didn't let anybody in. And then Jesus shows up, surprise, and he says, peace be with you. This was after he was killed and the disciples didn't know that he was alive yet and they were scared and they were hiding. And somehow Jesus comes in, surprise, and he was there among them. And what he did, he breathed on them and he said, here's the Holy Spirit. As God sent me, now I send you. So I have another surprise. I'm going to just tell them what the surprise is and you'll find out. So this is the surprise for you. What all of you take, all of you take two of these and find people in the congregation and give them a heart and say to them, God's love is for you. Does that sound good? Okay, okay, okay. All right, here's the second part of the surprise. So, yep. Hold tight, everybody. Also, after the church service, if you would help me rehide the hearts, that would be awesome. I bet you all will have some really good hiding spots. So keep the little hearts with you in your pews, and then we're going to rehide them after. Thank you for being so patient, everyone. Do you remember what you're going to say? God's love is for you. Okay. Find two people that need some hearts. Okay. Everybody else. Okay, if you have your hearts, you can go. Okay, oh, perfect, okay. Thanks for being so patient. Okay. Okay, <gasps> will you go share these with two people? God's love is for you. Okay, good luck. Okay, okay. Surprise! When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict, and strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll, we will read the psalm, Psalm 118, responsively by verses. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give you thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, O Lord, save us. We pray to you, Lord, prosper our day. 
days. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light, the form of procession with branches up to the corners of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercies endure forever. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you retain their sins, they are retained. Now, Thomas, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. When the other disciples told him that they had seen the Lord, he declared, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I don't know what jumps out to you the most in this post-resurrection story. So far, we've had Mary Magdalene show up in the graveyard looking for Jesus. She doesn't recognize this man thinking he's the gardener when it's actually Jesus. He says, Mary, and then she knows who he is. That's the story that happens right before this story. Mary Magdalene has told the disciples, I have seen the Lord, but it doesn't look like they believe her, does it? Because they're in a locked room, afraid. And so Jesus just shows up among them. Peace be with you. Peace be with you as the Father sent me, so I send you. And then he breathes on them. But have you noticed? Have you noticed the pattern yet? Mary Magdalene doesn't recognize Jesus. The disciples 
are in a locked room, not expecting him to show up, and then Thomas, Thomas who says, unless I see, unless I touch, but let's be honest, for those of us who have lost loved ones, for those of us who crave to again be able to see and touch and talk to those we love but who are gone, I would say the same thing. Can I just one more time? And so Thomas makes a request. Unless I see the marks of the nails, unless I touch, I won't believe. And so Mary Magdalene doesn't recognize Jesus in the cemetery. The disciples aren't expecting him to show up. And then Thomas, Thomas, Thomas does get his, his deepest desire granted because he's in the house He's in the house, and they've locked the doors again. So the disciples have experienced the risen Christ, and they're still locked inside a house. Jesus is alive, and they're still locked inside a house where nobody's getting in and nobody's going out. Does that sound like they've experienced the breath of God? They're still tightly clenched together in fear. But Jesus shows up again, as Jesus does, and he says again, peace, peace be with you. Thomas, And we don't even know if Thomas actually reaches out to touch Jesus. It doesn't say in the reading. Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand. Put it in my side. Jesus says to Thomas, here, I'm here. Come here. Come on. I'm, I'm right here. And we don't know if Thomas actually has to reach out to physically touch Jesus. But what we do know is Thomas says to Jesus, proclaims Jesus to be the strongest declaration we have yet seen in the Gospel of John, my Lord and my God. This is God. This is God. This is God among us. Doesn't matter if we lock the doors or not. Doesn't matter if we're suffering or not. Doesn't matter if we're in fear or not. Doesn't matter if we're doubting or not. God is going to show up. Breathe life into the afraid and the suffering and the constricted and the isolated and send the ones who still don't get it, send the ones who are still scared, send the ones who are still hanging on so tight, gives them some breath and some new life so they can loosen up a little bit and go and do the work of the risen Christ. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Mary didn't recognize Jesus in the garden. The disciples have locked themselves back in the house. Thomas says, I'm not going to believe unless I see and touch. And Jesus still shows up time and time again. Read through the rest of John, my friends. It's okay if the followers of Christ don't have it all together and don't always recognize when God is doing something good right in their midst because the disciples didn't. And they were the ones who spent the most closest and intimate time with this Jesus of Nazareth. It's like the disciples are still growing in their faith. It's like the disciples are still learning what it means that death isn't even going to defeat this movement of the Spirit that has touched their lives and now they're being sent out to touch the lives of others who are in locked rooms. 
And people are in locked rooms for good reasons sometimes, don't you think? Because it's not always safe. It's not always safe for somebody to be their full selves. Sometimes we've been so hurt, we've experienced such trauma, whether that's in a home, in a community, sometimes in a church, that people, to protect themselves, stay inside. Or when we look at our world and I say locked rooms, what do you think? People hiding in bunkers to be safe from bombs. Today. That is our world today. No wonder we feel fear, doubt, worry, constriction. No wonder we suffer when this is the world in which we live And these are exactly the places that the risen Christ shows up and breathes and said, peace. 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 Three times. This isn't a false peace of everything's fine. This is a peace born from the one who went into the depths of hell, reached out his hand to get everybody to a place of new life. And when I think about hell, I think about locked doors. When I think about hell, I think about isolation and suffering. When I think about hell, I think about being alone and afraid. And that is exactly the place where the Christ reaches out his hand and says, me too. Look at this mark. Look at my side. I'm here with you. And I'm not going to leave you here. This is not what you were meant for. So receive my spirit as God sent me. So I send you to be able to pick those locks. To release the fears that have been holding you captive. To be able to reach out and ask for help when you need it. To know that you're not alone. To look up at these screens and think, oh, there is something I can do for my brothers and sisters in Ukraine. We have connection in the global church. We are not powerless. There's something I can do here. But before you do anything, before you move a muscle, Receive the new life that is right in front of you. Filling your lungs, not just with breath, but with spirit, which is the same word in Greek and Hebrew. Let Jesus fill you with this new life, and maybe you're a little less constricted now. Maybe you're a little more loosey-goosey now. Maybe you might have the energy to get up out of your seat and praise God because you know you're not alone in that room anymore. It's to those rooms. It's to those places of isolation and suffering where Christ shows up every day. Surprise, 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 surprise. This is exactly where Jesus shows up. And he sent the disciples in his name to show up in those places too. So if you are in a locked room, if you're somebody who has been in there a while, today these words are for you. Peace. Love, liberation, 
and breath, peace be with you. Look at my hands and my side. Me too. Now let's get a breath of fresh air. Let's get out of here for a while. Let's, let's take a break, and when you're feeling strong enough, we'll, we'll go back in for the rest of them. Peace. That is what Christ breathes in and out on his disciples. Every day he is with them, and every day he is with you, and maybe the next time you go anywhere, or maybe the next time you do anything, that is your lens. Peace in and out of your body, too. Every step you take, every gesture you make, every word you say comes from that same place of breathing the word peace in and out. In and out. Peace. 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 Amen. We have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As we gather our hearts for prayer, please keep in your prayers John Poppert, the brother-in-law of Judy Hofsetter, and Gail Anderson, the mother of Wendy Pichette. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray for the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One who acts righteously, equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. Renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well with your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection life in the natural world. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. Direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. Uphold your children who cry out to you, especially John and Gail. Wherever people are overcome by the fear of death, breathe into them your life and peace. Jesus, Lord of life, inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise, especially the art and music ministries of this congregation. With joyful motion and sound, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep to ourselves. Jesus, Lord of life, hear us as we pray. Give us the words of your saints who, like Thomas, boldly confessed your Son as Lord and God. With you, our leader, empower us to live according to your ways. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share words and signs of Christ's peace with one another. Good morning. Good morning. You may be seated, you know, whenever you'd like to. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> it is good to be gathered together in worship today. 
If you are new or feel new or have new information to share with us, I'd invite you to fill out one of our blue welcome and connect cards that are in your pew. You can fill it out and place it in the offering plate in the back as you leave today. As a community of faith, we know that our experience of prayer and worship and song is all enriched by everyone who joins us in worship. Today, that's you, and we're so glad that you're here. Our women of the ELCA are inviting you, yes, even the men, to join them at the Fireside Dinner Theater in Fort Atkinson for the church basement ladies in A Mighty Fortress is Our Basement. This show is on Thursday, June 2nd, and begins with a dinner buffet at 5.30. Tickets are at the discounted price of just $65. But here's the thing, they must be ordered by next Sunday. Contact the church office to order or for more information. Next Sunday, May 1st, will be a special day around here as we celebrate the installation of Pastor Karina as our pastor here at Emmanuel. Bishop Joy Mortensen Wiebe will be with us to preach and preside at the rite of installation at both worship services. And associate to the Bishop for Leadership Support, Marie Leafblad, will also be joining us as well. Worship will include beautiful music, and there will be time in between worship services to meet the bishop as well. And if that isn't enough, there will also be food. The Congregation Council will be hosting a coffee hour in the multi-purpose room in between worship services, and a light meal will follow the 1030 worship service as well. We hope to see all of you there as we celebrate this new chapter in our life together here at Emmanuel. And also, please mark your calendar for Sunday, June 5th. It's just over a month away, but it'll be here before we know it. We are going to be celebrating Pentecost Sunday with worship and a meal and games and activities, not here, but at Lincoln Park here in Watertown. You can visit our website and Facebook page for more details, but for now, simply mark your calendar and we look forward to celebrating Pentecost with you there. Also, as a reminder to the kids, make sure that you um, help Pastor Karina after worship today. Put your hearts back, um, hide them in different locations. You can meet her after worship to do that. Thank you for all of the ways you continue to remain so generous to our mission and life together here at Emmanuel. We, we tell you that all the time, but it's really true. We're grateful for your support. Um, you can give using the offering plate in the back of the worship space online and in many other ways that you already do. And in just a few moments, we will celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Pastor Karina and Duane will be serving today. And at the invitation of an usher, simply come forward, receive a piece of bread in your hand, take a cup of wine from the tray, place the empty cup in the basket by the pillar as you return to your pew. All of our wine is dealcoalized and gluten-free wafers are available upon request. Most importantly, you are welcome at Christ's table. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread blessed it and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask that you mercifully accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with blessing and grace, receiving the forgiveness of sin, be formed to live as your holy people, and to be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. You may be seated.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, the creator, Christ, the giver of peace, and the life-giving spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.